It's about 1.30 in the afternoon in Israel right now, and Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu are meeting at IDF headquarters in Tel Aviv. We expect them to give a news conference very shortly. They are running behind. Meanwhile, moments ago, Israel taking direct hits from Hamas. As Egypt and Jordan announce aid for Palestinians trapped in the war-torn Gaza Strip. All right, Trey Yinks is on the ground with the latest. Trey, you're seeing new airstrikes right now, correct? Yeah, guys, you might end up hearing it here. The Israelis have been hammering the northern part of the Gaza Strip one time after another, hitting different uh, areas along the border. Generally, when they're targeting the same area multiple times, it means that they're trying to hit Hamas or Islamic Jihad tunnels because they have to strike at the same location to get that far underground. We hear these blasts in the distance, and then you hear the fighter jets overhead as they come back into Israeli territory. They do have to worry about anti-aircraft missiles. They have these missiles inside Gaza that have been smuggled in generally through Egypt, and it can be an incredibly uh, dangerous thing for both fighter jets and for helicopters that strike Gaza as they fly around that airspace. I do want to show you the scene here, and you hear just off in the distance another one of those strikes, but I want to show you here the wall behind me. This is the scene of a rocket attack that took place just about an hour and a half ago here in southern Israel in the town of Sterot. These are shrapnel marks in the side of a wall, and this just gives you a sense of the damage. My cameraman panning down here to the blood on the ground. There were people here at the time. They were moderately injured, and thankfully, they're right next to a medical evacuation point. So there's four or five ambulances in the distance. They were able immediately to get the injured here and take them to a local hospital. And if you come over here, you actually see where the rocket slammed into the ground. Right here, this on the ground, pieces of shrapnel from that rocket fired from Gaza litter this area. It is just a scene that is not unique to southern Israel, also central Israel, as Hamas fires on cities like Jerusalem and Tel Aviv since this all began after that massacre on Saturday morning. Guys? Has it been essentially rocket strikes now uh, since the weekend? You don't see a lot of the physical incursions from Hamas fighters? There have been a few infiltration attempts since that initial cross of more than what we're understanding now, at minimum 1,500 fighters because they've found the bodies of 1,500 militants and terrorists that crossed into southern Israel. But what we are really starting to understand is that there have been firefights at different locations and they're not always reported. We were talking to soldiers when we were in that kibbutz, that small community of Beri yesterday with the army. And when we were there, we uh, could see, and you can see these ambulances and medical workers still mm. pulling up to this staging point. But when we were with the army there, one soldier said that in that kibbutz where we were at 12 hours ago, they were in a firefight with a Hamas militant. And so it gives you a sense that they are still trying these incursions. Yesterday, three Hamas fighters were killed in the Zakim area just north of the Gaza Strip. Right. And we do anticipate they will try to infiltrate again, but the Israelis have secured much of the border. Hey, uh, Trey, real quick, as we look at the screen right is another airstrike from Israelis into Gaza City. So what you were saying a moment ago is they, they essentially try to level a building and then they continue to pound it with more rockets uh, so they can get into the tunnels. Do they have our really good bunker busters? Do we know whether or not they've got access to those? They do have bunker buster bombs and they use them, but even those don't work in Gaza sometimes because the tunnels are so deep. They put these tunnels so far underground that when they use a bunker buster, they have to hit the same place three or four times often to actually target the area they're trying to hit. They've had years and years to build this tunnel system, and it is one of the uh, most difficult parts about their job in Gaza. And remember, they have open fields in different areas, so you'll often hear about agricultural areas in Gaza that are getting pounded by airstrikes, and that's because these are where the rocket launchers are. They have oh, systems man. underground where they can move rockets, feed them into launchers, and then fire them in these barrages that land in communities just like this. And it's part of the reason when we've been in Gaza, we've stood in craters that are the size of houses, and still they haven't hit the target underneath. Trey, can, can you explain to our audience the different targets? And, and what I mean by that is, what is Hamas striking, and what is Israel striking? So they're both striking in uh, complex 
environments. And when I say complex environments, I want to talk about the mixture of military and civilian. In Gaza, it's an incredibly densely populated area. There are more than two million people that live there. It's 25 miles long and anywhere from three to seven miles wide. The Israelis are striking buildings. They're striking houses. They are striking uh, open fields. They have intelligence, though, about these areas and their link to Hamas or Islamic Jihad. So the current situation, we were told today, this was cleared for publication from the Israeli censor because it was sensitive information. But it was cleared that the Israelis are now targeting people inside Gaza who filmed any of the massacres on Saturday. So if they were able to wow. use their intelligence and someone on an iPhone took a video of someone else committing an atrocity or even just filming, they would find that person if they had the intelligence on them and hit them with an airstrike or a drone strike or artillery. Whoa. What we are seeing in Gaza today, and we, and we should describe this, it is just complete destruction of neighborhood blocks and houses. And it, it, the level of destruction is significant. It's, it is the worst Gaza has seen, certainly.